deeper you get into Torah, the clearer your brain becomes of what the truth is. Now, and I'll show you the truth. It's very, very simple to see. Now, all of you saw this drawing. This is a little bit funny because it shows that eventually we become robots. But it, forget about the robot part. Now, if, let's say, for example, we, became, we started with monkeys, right? And we eventually become something else. Now, how do we prove that we didn't come from monkeys? It's very simple. Does anybody know the answer? Because the monkey is still here. That's the answer. If we came from monkeys, the monkey wouldn't be here. And the reason why is because if the monkey is the first step, and we are the last step, at the very minimum, the very minimum, that means that the monkey was strong enough to survive by himself, but so was the second one. So was the second step in between us. But the scientists don't say that there was two steps. They're saying it was many, many steps. An infinite amount of steps over millions and millions of years, they say. So the reality is that for anything to mutate, according to the scientists, that means that they need to be strong enough to survive even without mutating. Because even... If they didn't mutate, even if they didn't mutate, they need to be able to survive. Because if they depended on mutating, they didn't have enough time to, they weren't strong enough to mutate. The point being, Rabotai, is that if the monkey is real, he's the first step, and we are the last step, you'd have one of two things happen here. Number one, the monkey wouldn't be here. Number two, even if the monkey is so strong as a being that he would still be here, all of the different steps in between would also be here. It's impossible for the monkey to still be here and for us to be here and nothing in between to be here. Like you're never going to see a half a monkey, half a human. Sometimes people look like monkeys, but they're not. They're not monkeys. Sometimes they act like monkeys, but they're not. In reality, if the monkey is the first step and we are the last step, you have to have one of two equations in order to make it valid. One, the monkey's not here, which means it's nonsense. Two, because you can't prove it. Two, all of the steps in between have to be here. All of them have to be here. Now, why, does that, why is this very valid? Why is this something that you need to know? Because if you didn't come from the monkey, then you have to explain where you came from. There's only one other theory, and that's the Torah. There's no other theories other than that. It's either the Torah or you came from a monkey. There's nothing in between. Some people take part of this and part of this and part of this and they make shakshuka out of it. But in reality, it's either this or it's this. There's two theories. Either we came from monkeys and lizards and uh, some dirt on the floor that transformed into a human being somehow. Or we came from a Torah. Then Hashem decided, here you go. There was nothing. There was a piece of dirt. I made him into a human being. I called him Adam. That's the only two theories available. There's another way to prove that the only valid way that we could have come to existence is without mutation, is without the whole process of survival of the fittest that the scientists say, without the whole process of coming from lizards and monkeys and amoebas and, and, and all these types of things. And the reason why is because these other processes depend on something called mutations. A mutation doesn't just start but from nothing. First you have a cell, then the cell goes through either mitosis or meiosis, which you probably learned in some science class, which means the cell replicates itself, either identical or, se or, it's, or similar. And it replicates itself, eventually one of the cells decides it doesn't want to stay a cell anymore, it wants to be a dancer, and he decides to become something else and it mutates. Sometimes a Jew doesn't want to be a Jew anymore and he wants to be a Goy. Same thing. Now this mutation has to be perfect because if something wrong happens, the cell dies. Now this drawing that I, that I asked you, if you think it comes from a human being or not, is one of the proofs that I had in my life. This is called a flagellal motor. Flagellal molar, F-L-A-G-E-L-L-A-M. Now, scientists discovered this motor 
but they didn't discover it in NASA. They didn't discover it in a, some type of engineering company. They discovered it in a human body. In fact, every single one of you has trillions of it. And you need it in order to survive. Because every single bacteria that you have in your life, in your body, that gives you life, that gives you the ability to, you know, to, to operate, needs to move from one place to the other. Now, you've all seen, I'm sure, some type of uh, uh, visual image of your blood cells moving from one place to the other through your veins or something moving in your body. How do they move? They move through some type of mechanism. That mechanism is partly because of this motor because this motor works in a very perfect way where it operates, where this thing swings over and over and it goes from place to place and it takes cells with him. Now, this motor has an, many, many pieces, but they highlighted a few of them. There's the green one, there's the yellow one, there's this one that's gray a little bit, there's blue, there's light blue, there's the orange, there's the red, meaning this is not just one piece. This is many, many pieces. In real life, it actually looks like this. But there's no color images here because you can't take a color image because this is so small. This picture is 50 million times the size of what it really is. 50 million times the size. Now, the scientist that discovered this said that if one of these pieces didn't work, decided to go on vacation for a weekend, didn't want to work, not only will the motor not operate anymore, but very likely the subject will die. Why? Because that cell, that bacteria, that needed to transfer from point A to point B, if it doesn't, that could potentially mean that the person can't breathe anymore. Or that could potentially mean that the person can't see anymore. Or that could potentially mean that something in the body that he needs is not going to happen, and he simply just cannot operate. Why is this important to you? Why am I giving you a science class instead of a shiur Torah? Because in order for this to come from nothing, to come from some type of mutation, that means that the first time out that it mutated from nothing into this, it has to be perfect. Not only once, but an infinite amount of times. Because if there was ever a mistake in any of the motors that you ever have in your body, life would be very, very different.